In this video, I want to talk about what is meant by a conditional probability, and I'm going to introduce this concept by talking about the discrete case, the case of discrete random variables. And I'm going to use the same example which I've used previously, which is the case of whereby a random variable x represents whether or not an individual chosen at random from the population of interest actually has a disease. So it takes on a value of zero if that individual does have the disease, uh, sorry, doesn't have the disease, or a value of one if they do. Similarly, there is another random variable y, which represents whether or not an individual has symptoms for that disease. And it takes on a value of zero if they're not symptomatic, and it takes on a value of one if they are. And as we've spoken about before, all of these probabilities, these joint probabilities summed up together, have to add up to one, as they do in this particular matrix here. So, as we spoke about before, we spoke about what is meant by a joint probability. So the joint probability here might be what is the probability that an individual doesn't have the disease and they are, let's say, symptomatic. So the probability that x is equal to 0 and the probability that y is equal to 1. So all we need to do now is find out which particular entry this is relevant to and, easy enough, it's this bottom left component here which gives us a value of 0 0.1. Next, I want to talk about what is meant by a conditional probability. So a conditional probability, all it is, is the probability of something occurring given that a particular event has occurred. So here what we might be interested in is what is the probability that an individual does actually have the disease given that they are symptomatic. So imagine that we're a doctor and we're trying to advise this particular patient Given that they have the symptoms which are common to that disease, what is the probability that they actually do have the disease? So when we do this, we're talking about constraining the space which we're talking about, because we're talking about we know that an individual is symptomatic. So because we know that they're symptomatic, we are talking about this space here, which I'm highlighting, which corresponds to the bottom row. And furthermore, because we know we sit within this particular space here, we know that this represents all of the possible outcomes now. And because of that, the probabilities within this particular space have to sub up to 1. But at the moment they don't, because if I add these two together I just get 0 0.4. So we're going to talk about a resolution to this issue. So the idea here is that we could work out what is the probability that x is equal to 1 given that y is equal to 1, so what's the probability that an individual has the disease given that they're symptomatic, and we could also work out what is the probability that x is equal to 0. In other words, the individual doesn't have the disease given that they are symptomatic. And because this now represents the entirety of the possible outcomes which can occur, these two things have to sum to 1. So if we sort of start off by sort of naively saying that, imagine that this top case here is actually just equal to the value it is in the box. So imagine that this is equal to 0 0.3. And imagine that the other case is just equal to 0 0.1. As I've said before, these two things, when they sum together, because this now represents the entirety of outcomes, should sum up to 1. So how can we actually handle this? Well, the way in which we handle this is by normalising each of these values. By normalising, I just mean we divide. So we divide this top outcome here by the total probability of event y occurring. In other words, the marginal probability of um, actually being symptomatic to the disease. So in this case, it's just the sum of 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3. Similarly, on the bottom, we do exactly the same thing. So we just divide through by the marginal probability of actually having symptoms for the disease. So we divide through by 0 0.1 point plus rather 0 0.3. So this top probability here easy enough, just becomes 0 0.3 over 0 0.4, which is then 3 quarters, if we simplify that, and this bottom probability here just becomes 1 quarter, which, simply enough, when we add these two things together, they now sum up to 1. So now they actually satisfy the conditions for a probability, so that's good. But what's the intuition for why this top probability here is actually 3 quarters, and why this bottom probability here is 1 quarter? Well, it's simple enough, because we know we're constraining ourselves to this bottom row here. So all we need to do now think about is what is the ratio of one of these particular entries to the other one, essentially. And, well, not, not quite 
in technically what we need to do is we need to think about what is the ratio of this potential outcome relevant or relative to the entire probability of this thing occurring. So because in this case the sort of relative probability is sort of three times as much for the case of x being equal to 1 given that y is equal to 1 compared to when x is equal to 0 given that y is equal to 1, the probability is three times as much. Similarly, we could also work out what is the probability that, let's say, y is equal to 1, given that, in this case, x is equal to 1. So on the face of it, it looks like it's quite similar to this top probability here, but it's going to be slightly different, because now what we're doing is we're thinking about constraining ourselves to the case where x is equal to 1 rather than y is equal to 1. So now our sample space represents this sort of second column, which I'm now highlighting in red, and now what we're thinking about, what is the probability that y is equal to 1, given that x is equal to 1? So actually it's going to be exactly the same as the other case. We just needed to go about it a slightly different way. So again, we're talking about the 0 0.3 here. That's the relevant entry. And we have to normalize it. So we just, again, divide through by 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3. So in this case, again, that becomes 3 quarters. So that's easy enough in, on its own as well. So I've talked about some examples. What's the actual rule that we can use to derive what the marginal probability is? So let's say we're interested in the probability that x is equal to a particular value, given that y is equal to a particular value. So conditional on the fact that this sort of sign here, in case you sort of missed it, means conditional on the fact that y is equal to a certain value, what is the probability that x takes on another value? OK, so in order to work this out, all we need to do is we first of all find the joint probability. So the joint probability is the probability that x is equal to that particular value and y is equal to that particular value, because that's all we did in each of these cases. We first of all found the relevant cell entry. And then all we need to do is we divide that through by the probability of the event y occurring in this particular case, because we need to normalize it. So in this case, we just divide through by the marginal probability which is the marginal probability of y being equal to over y. So this simple formula that I've written out at the bottom here, if you can sort of make it out, is the way in which we can derive conditional probabilities from the joint probability. And note that we could rewrite this denominator here in terms of a sum over all possible values of x of the joint probability as well. And we're going to use that in future videos to help us to derive some properties of the conditional probability.